hope all is well. So I've been absorbing some of the news lately, especially what happened after my latest video, okay? And let's just get the white elephant out of the room uh, now, okay? Uh, I was right. Now, we are seeing more inflamed rhetoric around the Holy War scenarios, and just at the end of Passover, we had some 19-year-old go and shoot up a synagogue out in California, okay? And, and you should just hear the news stories in its wake. You know, this is a hate crime, and firearms are used far too often as these weapons I actually check the FBI's database there's a couple more items up there above uh, firearms that are killing people every year you know what I mean and guess what it's not the AR style rifle that everybody talks about all right those actually kill less people than you think go st check some statistics if you don't agree with me all right I'm not I'm not here for that today all right we, we already know they're here to grab the guns even even precious Trump is here to grab the guns okay he's already endorsed a ban on bump stocks this is bump Stock Speaking, we're going to listen in. Like the one used in Las Vegas, are illegal under current law. That process began in December, and just a few moments ago, I signed a memorandum directing the Attorney General to propose regulations to ban all devices that turn legal weapons into machine guns. And then he wants to favor taking the guns first and then doing due process, okay? Just like he wants everybody to get their shots. Or others. Okay. Allow due process so that no one's rights are trampled, but, but the ability to go to court, obtain an order, and then collect not only the firearms, but all, any, any weapons in the position or of that individual. Or might take the firearms first and then go to court. You tell parents about getting their kids vaccinated. They have to get the shot. The vaccinations are so important. This is really going around now. They have to get their shots. All right. So I can understand why and a lot of reasons, you know, my channel doesn't get a lot of views because I'm not strictly uh, – endorsing the left-right paradigm, okay? I don't come from strictly one angle, so there's a lot of times when the information that I'm espousing here, uh, it doesn't fall in line with people's belief system because, you know, you can't criticize Trump or else you lose uh, credibility with the MAGA. And you can't say that this guy's actually doing some cool things for the country because then you're condemned by the NPC. So it's really a lose-lose in that sense. So I guess if you're a strictly political person only looking through things through political optics and, and not looking at any of, the, uh, any of the nefarious underpinnings in this channel, just might not be for you. Uh, but if you do like some insight, you do like uh, to, to get both sides of the story and, you know, hear some things that you might not on, on a regular channel then, hey, this might be for you after all. See, the thing is, is I was contemplating actually killing the channel. Uh, and I'll tell you why. Because ever since I reported on the Las Vegas shooting, uh, my channel's subscriptions and views went to a crawl, okay? I was gaining, like, a subscriber a day, which is, you know, like I said, I just started the YouTube channel and nobody knew about me and stuff. And I was getting, like, a subscriber a day and, and some okay views for the size of my channel at the time. And the moment I reported on the Las Vegas shooting, and it just happened, it was around that time where YouTube was doing the overhauls of their you know, algorithms and trying to curb uh, fake news, even though we know where the real fake news is coming from, and you know, trying to fight hate speech. And getting caught up in that wake, a lot of YouTube channels got put on some, some list, you know, whether it's demonetized or shadow banned, you know, not popping up in search results, not being suggested from other videos. Uh, you saw a lot of YouTubers that are in the, the alternative truth community and, and, you know, not out there and, and mainstream where people are just being, you know, entertainment and recording themselves farting and eating and stuff. Uh, those channels, they they tanked in viewership. And I, I noticed now even on my, uh, my analytics on YouTube, most of my views are coming from my subscribers and coming from my video in cards. Uh, and, and very few of them are from actual search results. You know, and that's happening with with people that I'm familiar with, you know, channels with, you know, 500,000 subscribers or more that I know of. Uh, Brian from High Impact, uh, High Impact Flicks and High Impact Vlogs is another one. OK, I've been unsubscribed from his channel once. I've been unsubscribed from another channel. I didn't unsubscribe myself. Uh, somehow I got unsubscribed. OK, and the the viewerships for their channels even though they're huge channels huge channels uh, i mean when you're talking about over 100,000 subscribers you're getting some pretty regular views and then all of a sudden these channels are being 
are being limited, limiting with the viewership, limiting with the suggestion, limiting with their monetization. Uh, and now they're essentially being hidden, all right? Because YouTube, whatever they're trying to do, they're trying to curb, you know, fake news and, and stuff, which really is just another word for censorship, okay? Uh, really, they're, they're doing censorship. I mean, what happened after the New Zealand shooting, right? They banned social media. What happened after Sri Lanka? They banned social media, okay? And they say it's in an effort to fight, you know, misinformation. And in a lot of ways, I know that there is, you know, some information out there that's not necessarily kosher and it, it does muddy the water, you know what I mean? But in a lot of cases, people are trying to get out the information and they want it all to be filtered through a mainstream media lens or a government lens. You know, oh, that's our investigators didn't confirm that fact. So it can't be true, you know. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I was thinking about killing the channel, because I actually put a lot of effort into some of these videos where I go out and find the links to the articles I'm talking about. You know, if I heard something on the fly on the radio, I got to go back and see if I can track that down. So when I'm talking and overlaying, you know, the relevant visuals and imagery, uh, I'm not just talking out of my butt and people can actually see the corresponding article or corresponding headline. That's sort of the genesis of the conversations we have here on California Carter. Uh, but, you know, doing that and stringing them together in a way that, you know, makes sense and bringing like the articles that people aren't necessarily looking at, um, that's pretty, pretty labor intensive. It's pretty cumbersome and time consuming. And for YouTube to arbitrarily, you know, write off certain channels and not to come up in, in, in search results and suggestions because, you know, all these platforms, they're geared towards getting you to stay on the screen as long as possible. And, you know, if, if, it isn't in line with the cookie cutter mainstream, you'll get nixed, all right? And and that's really what's happening to a lot of channels. So if it's not their subscribers sharing the videos and, you know, bringing it to other platforms, which, you know, I've, I've seen some of my videos take off when another individual, you know, shares it on social media, they're not getting the views that they need to or that they should be getting um, on YouTube alone, which is why a lot of content creators are sort of moving away from the, the platform. But see, the thing is, is, when you've got more butts in the seat on one platform and you're trying to reach, you know, not just people where you're preaching to the choir, you're actually still trying to reach some of the untapped individuals. That is one of the platforms you plug into in order to, to catch those untapped individuals. Because if there aren't the, the audience that you're aiming to captivate, which is pretty much, you know, the, the, the people who have enough cognition to parse some of this information and those who are on the fence when it comes to some of the information, those are the people that you're really trying, trying to get. Because if we're talking about the, the voting and the, the uninformed voting masses, you know, we've got to inoculate them with some information so we have a fighting chance when these oppressive measures and totalitarian um, laws and, and, and uh you know, litigations and legislations are being proposed after incidents, especially after crisis. You know, that's one of the biggest things. That's one of the biggest catalysts. If they can't push an agenda, uh, you know, throughout throughout a year or throughout an election cycle to, to sort of speed things up, they'll have a crisis. So you'll have a shooting, uh, you'll have a an arson, you know, some terrorist attack, right? And that's what we've seen. And in these latest high-profile incidents, what we're seeing, it's all tying into a, a religious war agenda because they've already got the sort of the political war agenda um, going. And what I mean by that is just infesting each, whether it's a political or religious leaning, each little category with, with divisive, uh, with divisive measures. So ultimately when, when we come together to try to talk about some of these issues, we, we don't really have any constructive dialogue. It's deconstructive and it doesn't go anywhere. So we have to have the nanny state, right? The mom and dad, parent government and media come in and tell us how we, how we need to think. You know, they, they, they don't want dissent. They don't want people questioning the narratives. They don't want that. And if you do, you know, you're uh, like they try to demonize anybody who they call it red pilled. Right. If you're red pilled, you just become this this intolerable person who only uh, propounds nonsense. You know, it, it's kind of crazy the lengths they will go to demonize a person, a subject or a topic, you know, pick your poison. So nobody talks about it, or so very few people talk about it, and the only type of momentum and energy that ends up getting pushed ultimately behind, you know, pick your pick your topic, uh, is the one that they wanted, because they've conditioned people through one event after another, through uh, fake conversations on the news media, right? They bring somebody in who only represents one side and doesn't represent the other side, so you get this, this unfair sort of... Uh, 
picture being painted by the powers that shouldn't be. You know, people will sit there and, and watch clip after clip of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. People will sit there and praise Trump, even though he's, you know, putting bans on bump stocks, coming after the Second Amendment, telling people they got to get their shot. You know, and nobody wants to talk about that. Nobody wants to talk about the nefarious underpinnings of the political system. Nobody wants to talk about the dangerous precedent being set with vaccines and, and the, the forced vaccine mandates. You know, shoot up this cocktail of drugs. We lie about everything except for the safety of vaccines. So go ahead and take up this drug. You know what I'm saying? We don't want to talk about any of that. We'd rather watch this other stuff for entertainment purposes. We don't want to learn anything. We don't want to know anything. We don't want to know that this um, trajectory that the media is trying to put us on is trending towards a, a place where it's not going to be good for the people. I mean, we're not looking. How many people are actually looking at that? You know, I understand there's an awakening going on. I understand people are becoming more privy to, to what's otherwise considered, you know, alternative information. But the reality is, is the, the public is sleepy. You know what I mean? It's just, just they don't have the eyes to see and the ears to hear. So there's only, a, 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 there's a s increasingly smaller uh, audience that is going to be receptive to the type of information channels like mine are putting out there. You know, the content creators like mine are trying to get, or content creators like me are trying to get other people to see. You know, and, and in a lot of cases, all it is, you just have to scratch the surface. You just have to, it's just cursory information to sort of understand that there's there's more going on to some of these subjects and topics that we talk about here than just what's being espoused by, you know, the government officials or the mainstream media. There's there's more to it than that. And if we aren't willing to accept that and look at these these instances as though they can be used against us, uh, I think we'll be we'll more easily fall uh, for the next crisis that comes down the pipeline and the mental malleability that we have after that. You know, I, I tell people all the time, just like when you're going 65 miles an hour on the freeway or more and you run into something, that that metal becomes pretty pliable at those speeds. It's the same thing that happens to your mind, your, your, your mental pliability, your mental malleability after a crisis. No good crisis goes to waste, and the powers that be take advantage of that. And that's what we're talking about. Uh, so I'll stick around here on YouTube for a little bit more. We'll see uh, where the momentum of this channel goes. You know, hey, I understand. Uh, I, you know, I, I hear it from other content creators myself. You know, maybe maybe the content just isn't that great. That maybe that's why nobody's you know tuning in. But I think it's more than that because I I, I see that people are receptive this, to to this type of information, the, the certain types of folks out there. But it's just the fact that YouTube does such a good job at hiding some of these channels that the audience that normally would tune in doesn't even know you exist. And I. I think that's what's unfair about it is is the censorship part about it is that people try hard to bring you know information or whether they're just creating something else what maybe it's not alternative media or or amateur journalism maybe it's something else entirely and it's still hard to get a leg up because these platforms are only making it to where as long as it's profitable for them then they'll promote you and if it's not profitable for them if it goes against the mainstream model uh rather than you know demonizing you and and sort of uh going about, you know, taking care of you in an obvious way, well, you just won't show up in search results as often. You know what I mean? You can't prove that. You see what I'm saying? And if you're using these platforms, it's their discretion uh, for what they want to promote anyway, right? So why should you care? Why should you care? It's not a slippery slope of free speech. It's not It's not um, treading on any rights and freedoms. It's not It's not anything like that, right? There's no. There's no nefarious underpinnings to this at all. Anyway, California Carter signing off.